I'm telling you, bro. Like, yep. even me personally, they, they came for me hard. They came for me and deleted my YouTube, my Instagram, my Airbnb, my Uber, seven banks, my payment processor, my Discord account, my Gmail. Holy moly. All within, bro, within 48 hours. So um, another thing is you need to sit and analyze and try and think, how would I survive without these institutions? How would I survive without these things? Because being a step ahead of it is so much easier than waiting for it to happen to you, you know? And, and just so you know, like I said, I have a lot of people who work internally at these companies, and they're not completely liberal. I've had a bunch of uh, anon emails from people who say, look, I work at Meta. I work at YouTube. They are analyzing in real time the results of this ban and what people think about it. And they know that most people are unhappy about what happened. And that, that's got them scared a little bit because they're no longer seen as fair, and everybody knows that. And they have a very difficult situation. They either have to let me back, which I don't think they'd ever do, mm -hmm. or they have to or they have to double down and try and go full Nazi and just shut me up absolutely everywhere. And that's going to result in a lot more censorship for lots of people. So anyone who's close to me, I'm saying, listen, whatever you're making on YouTube, whatever you're doing, you need to start backing things up, bro. I wish I wish I was pushing people to rumble when my YouTube channel was still alive. Got you know, it. it's like it, it's always harder once they nuke you. And, and I think it's just going to get str more stringent and more stringent, bro. So that's the first thing in, in terms of network. I, I, have a, I have a network myself called The War Room. If you go to CobraTake.com and just tell them you spoke to me. And, we, and we're, we're about 2,300 guys all around the world, and we have a very similar outlook. And we're basically just battle planning and strategy and trying to fight this. But I don't know if you're big on – you watch TikTok. Do you watch TikTok very much? I, I don't watch. I have a profile on there, but we upload all the time. But uh, I, I, I tend to just, just upload, not necessarily watch all the time. Yeah, that's, that's, that's good. But like the, the algo, I basically run the algo, right? And I don't even have an account anymore. And that's just because I have so many people on my side and anyone who's on my team just reposting things. That's another thing I'll say. Anyone who works for you or anyone you can give an affiliate deal to or anyone you can motivate, especially something like TikTok, they need to spam the content. They need to spam the algo. So you have so many amazing podcasts. Each podcast could be chopped down to, let's say, with all the different versions of editing, all the different kind of themes and tunes they can put on it. Each podcast is 500 to 600 TikTok. You need like 20 accounts just blasting them out to the world, pushing them to some, pushing them to like an email list or a Rumble account or something that can't get banned. Hmm. Because I think the, the face of social media has changed and what you're doing with your long format is amazing, but there are so many people who have genuine ADHD, bro. They can't watch something for more than 30 seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So to a degree, it's been my downfall because the, the, the TikToks and everything blew up and kind of got out of control. But if you can control, if I could go back in time and I got a team, which I could control the TikToks and create the message, man, I, got, I became the most Googled man on earth. No TikTok. kidding, man. <laughs> <laughs> Representing Shy Town. I'm from Shy Town too, baby. So, Amazing. It's Amazing. Awesome. So I'd say, I'd say to you, especially your podcast, because I've watched a few of them. They're excellent. You need to get them chopped up, short format. Everywhere, Instagram Reels, YouTube Shorts, TikTok. You need to hire someone or get someone full time all day, every day, just blasting the algo and pushing them to something that's bulletproof, either an email list or a Rumble channel. That's that's an easy way for you to start getting a whole bunch of data in the bank that big tech can't take from you. You know what I mean? Think about how scary what he just said was. That within 48 hours he was wiped out with a systematic targeted move, sweeping his banks credit card processing, websites, hosting, Discord, social media within 48 hours. It's a coordinated strike. If that doesn't freak you out about the world that we live in, you're officially now on notice. you got to process this. If somebody decides to go to the social media switch with your name on it and decide to turn it off, and you've made a living on social media, if you made a living online, you've made a living through charging people on credit cards, they just shut you off. Well, how do you pay the bills? How do you eat? How do you provide for your family? How do you protect your family? How do you go from one city to another? How do you go from one country to another? You don't, they just shut you off. So some takeaways. I'm reminded of friends that are Mormon in faith. And if you visit their homes, they usually have some form of storage or pantry. And they have food stored up there for weeks, if not months, ready to go just in case. Don't get caught up in the social media, internet-based, bank-based form of tyranny. Have gold. Have silver. Have some form of other methods of exchange. Water and food is currency. I know this because when I was in Somali, Africa, it was one big wasteland. No rule outside the warlords who had guns and who had food. Want to take a quick 
Look at what looks like with no law. Somalia, Africa. We were there. Operation Restore Hope. And I saw firsthand what it looked like with lawlessness at 19, 20 years old. I saw firsthand what it looked like with no medical care. And I saw firsthand what it was like with famine and no food. Who had power? Who had control? Now, I'm not so sure if America will ever get to that. But there's certain things, there's certain polls out there that says America feels that within the next 10 years, there potentially may be a civil war. These things that you have to be worried about and plan for. And the way you eliminate that worry is have a plan for it. And hopefully it's a plan that you hope, and I hope, that we never have to use. But if we do have to use it, at least we know we have confidence and clarity when those dark times do come to make sure we thrive, not just survive. Look inside.